Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet and of YouTube, and welcome back to Final Fantasy Chronicles of Eno. With me, your host and game master, Skidramas, otherwise known as Tone Shift, as always. And with me today, we have, of course, our full roster of players. We have Thanatos, played by Hades Shadow 92, our Dark Knight. Wow. <laughs> We have Rocket the Chocobo, played by Luminous Starlight, our cyborg chocobo warrior. Hey. <laughs> you sound tired. Hey, yes. <laughs> we have Darkness, playing our human paladin, Alistair. Back again. Fuck it. And having some technical difficulties, too. Hey, everyone, sorry. You done fucked it up. And last but certainly not least, we you have Tom me. playing Neothil, our Elvon Ranger. You stole my line, Thanatos. <laughs> <laughs> that will be bad. Uh, oh, excuse me. I'm technically the things we're going to be fighting today probably don't have blood per se. And I won't be muting myself today because even Discord's having some glitch problems. <laughs> well, at any rate, to recap where we left off last time... It was basically just more trekking through the halls of the Divia Corp facility, largely level two, fighting through plenty of soldiers, gathering some small amounts of intel and stocking up on items found scattered throughout. I'm kind of surprised you guys didn't scout out the other, uh, you know, item containment rooms, such as where you found the bomb fragment, but whatever, too late now. I mean, the I mean, other, other rooms we didn't actually search were the, you know, the experimentation chambers, which we didn't do because that just screamed horrible shit we didn't want to see. Well, at any rate, Ugh. excuse me, she was stretching. So, after that, partway through meandering through the halls of level two, alarms began to blare, and a machine voice announced that there had been a containment breach on level three. The few scientists you encountered after those alarms went off seemed very alarmed and disturbed by that idea, and eventually, after some more scouting around, you managed to pick up a key card for the level three elevator. And as you approached, you found that it was actually coming up. And when it opened, you found a collection of... T-1000s. Abominations. They are called abominations. abominations. Let's try to avoid <laughs> copyright strike here, please. <laughs> they will get copyright strike for calling them a T-1000. <laughs> it's my channel anyway. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's your channel, but I'm the one managing all this shit anyway. Well, um... So... Now then, you fought through those abominations and found that they had apparently gone berserk for one reason, turning against their DV Corp creators, 
although as to the why, you're not as of yet sure. But regardless, you then stepped into the elevator and made your way down. And where we last ended the session, the doors were just opening to let you view level three. So I have gone ahead and transferred you over to the DV Corp HQ map and all of its colossally enormous splendor. The level three map that we will be using is down in the bottom right. So find yourselves crammed in an elevator somewhere. So I believe this is the elevator. You guys are over here, where I just pinged. Shit. Oh, there we are. Yep. We are... You very tiny. Dude. Holy shit, it is so tiny. Yep. Yeah. I have I have this image in my head that everybody's crammed in there and like Rocket takes a about half of the freaking just little room and then your tokens just... your tokens more or less represent the amount of space you take up approximately so oh these are large elevators in my flat building hmm. yeah. all right so are we gonna get out of this thing or what. The elevator goes down and down, the rumbling filling your ears, and then the door slides open with metallic slides and the high-pitched ding of the floor being reached. And the first sight you are greeted to is a long hallway with flickering lights and lined with doors on either side, reinforced heavy doors, many of which now stand open. Up ahead of you, there is the broken down remnants of an automated turret from the ceiling and a large bloody smear covering the floor and disappearing into one of the open doors in the side. A dead abomination sits, you know, crumpled and bubbling on the bottom of the floor at the end of said bloody smear, whereas another one, looking to be having a hard time maintaining its form, is standing in front of it with a snarling and growling and blood dripping from its jaws. I will go ahead and highlight all of that for you. You know, when I was a girl, we sometimes sat around the campfire to tell horror stories. This is reminding me of those horror stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. is yeah. quite the horror show. Is there supposed to be an animatronic jumping out at us? Thank you, Rocket, for your usual fourth wall break of the day. <laughs> uh, wow, a FNAF freaking reference. And I've I need heard to, one of those I, in a I, while. Yep, let's hear. And I actually need to point something out. Rocket, all of these extra yeah. rooms along the sides here, you are not familiar with them. Those were not here when you were spending your time in this facility. Hmm. All these extra rooms are new. These Legend. are all new. Never mind that the they're... lights don't work very well. So they renovated since you were here last. You can spend makes... money on a new room, but no, not lighting. No. Oh, it makes sense. They need someone new to practice all that demonic bullshit. Speaking of demonic bullshit, uh, shouldn't we be doing something about the one that's still alive? I don't mean ambush. <laughs> I'm going to use can ambush. Somebody put it out of its misery. Okay. I suspect an ambush it's... might be happening. Yes, it gives me an extra damage step, so uh, that'll be... Use roll storm. Roll 56 plus 4. 7. 7 to hit. You're rolling yep. your attack. Uh, yep. That just hits. Go ahead and do damage. 2d6. Pl so plus, and that'll be times 3, because I'm doing ambush. Uh, so 13, 26... 36. All right. Ouch. All right. So as you see this abomination in the middle of the corridor chomping down on something, you imagine probably the remnants of whoever was in here last. You lift your crossbow and you fire off a shot. It goes flying forward 
pierces through the back of the abomination, goes flying out its front. There's a spray of its grayish matter across the floor, intermingling with the fresh blood smear. It staggers a few steps before turning around to glare at you, its orange eyes flaring with angry light and a deep, dark girl snarl coming up from the bottom of its voice. I thought you said it was almost dead. Wounded, but not almost dead. Oh. It's cool. definitely closer <laughs> now than it was. I'm gonna fly off Uh, that's fine. <coughs> Wait, does well, Ambush also if work? I occasionally cough every now and then? Because I am currently at the ascent of cold. Uh, I'm apologi oh, apologies. So, does Ambush work for all of us or just me? That's a good question, Tom. I think it works for just me. Okay. And... Yep, find it to us. Yeah, I would do it. Damage. There is a fire spell. Alright, so that's 5 MP you have just lost. Yeah, I got it. Alright. All right, so, as the abomination, like, scrapes one of its large feet along the ground, preparing to charge, Thanatos, you sort of nudge away to the front of the group, put a hand out the elevator, and are like, nope! <laughs> Sounded a fireball, it hits the abomination, and it just, <laughs> just splatters all across this hallway into a thin layer of sweaty goop. Well, I feel okay. sorry for the cleanup crew. Well, don't uh, worry. I'm sure we'll find a way to sterilize this place in, in epic fashion. All right. Well, since we might be gearing up for a deal, I'm going to take one of my four ethers. All right. Huh. As I recall, that gives me... Yep. Yep. Right. Yeah, that'll do it. Anyone else want to take anything before we go on? I'm pretty sure there's going to be more of these things. And I'm good for now. These things don't seem that tough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk of fate, honey. They may, they may not be tough, but this is... Stay alert. You never know when a bunch of archers are going to show up and surround you. Please don't remind me of that rocket. What are you guys doing? Uh, I'm going to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the lead first, using stealth to kind of check in that doorway that's currently blood smeared open. That would be lovely. Yeah. Also, what... I would love to know what killed that other one. That's why I'm checking. That's why I'm using stealth check. Right. For this. Stealth. I watch behind just in case anything jumps out behind us. Quiet. Uh oh. 18. You are stealthy as can be. Uh, check, wait. Checking uh, over the puddle that is the dead abomination, you see. Uh, actually, make a scavenge check. Uh, scavenge. Look, that's my specialty. To look, to, look, right. to look for the. You want to move up? Walk it in knee? Mika, On the west. Yeah. I mean, Mika. Uh, eight. Let's just eat. Well, you guys stay back for me because I'm stealthing, and you lot being there would defeat the point of the stealth. <laughs> well, you sift through the goop for a little bit, and uh, eventually you find empty, uh, empty cylinders that you recognize as being the magically charged bullets fired by Magitek weapons. You're able to deduce right. from that that this particular abomination was killed by the turret whose shrapnel lies not far away before the turret was destroyed. You can only assume that the wounded abomination you just disposed of was wounded by the same turret before it took it out. Is this door actually open here? Because the blood smear is leading into it. Yes, it is. But it's worth noting, all of these doors actually have small, maybe foot-wide square windows set at about face level in each of them, allowing you to peer into each one. Well, first off, what can I see inside there? Well, you appear inside, and it's mostly empty. It's just a, it's just an empty room. The blood smear continues in, and you <laughs> see like the legs of a scientist in there. The rest of him's oh, missing. Oh, I'm having that yep. But judging by the look of the room, it's heavily reinforced. <laughs> the light that's at the on the ceiling is also, you know, protected and reinforced. This gives you the impression of a sturdy holding cell. These look like holding cells, probably where the abominations came from, which I guess the scientist got surprised when the door opened. Which begs the question, why did the doors open? 
gee, I wonder if it could have been the nasty little servant of Diablos that helped make these things. It's a Maybe. greeting card. A greeting card. Well, it's a very gruesome greeting card. All right, let's check these other rooms. Look in the windows. Don't right. open the doors. Peek the into the window. One. Right. Oh, there's no peering peering in the window. Window. So peering through each of the windows, a lot, a lot of these cells are open, by the way. But peering through the windows on a lot of them and peering into the rooms themselves, you see most of them are empty. But once you turn your attention to the southern set of rooms on this particular corridor, you find that there are more dead abominations in some of them. Albeit these ones don't appear to have been killed by bullet fire, because their bodies are whole. They're not dissolved, but they're lying completely motionless and partially um, molten looking on the ground. I don't feel... I, I don't trust this. If they're not goop, then how do we know they're really dead? As it is, the ones with the dead abominations in them are currently locked. Those doors did not open. Alright, do not open those doors. Where's a way out of it? Because I'm not seeing one. Hmm. They okay, all fail these cells. Are failed test subjects or uh, something uh, else the, killed There's them. a hallway down here. Nah. You all didn't okay. really specify you were looking that way, so I didn't light it up. We are looking that way now. Can you light it up? Okay, well, you round the corner and look down the, hor the corridor that was to the left of the elevator. Due to the a lot of the lights being flickering and down, you see uh, that the, your your range of view is limited. But you are able to deduce that this is another that on the left side of this corridor, as you're starting to head down it, there are more holding cells going for quite some distance. You see another bloody smear between two of the doorways. Need take point. Yes, stay back a minute. I'm. I'm going right. to sneak my way down there, see if I can spot anything. Look through this next window. Yep. You look through it, and you see another dead abomination. And afterwards... Another dead abomination. What about further down? I'm... Corridor. How far down are you going? Well, uh, you can see where I currently am. There are more doorways, and quite some distance. <sighs> goes away. Well, uh, before I check out the next doorway, I'm going to kind of... I'm, I still think I still haven't checked, don't I? So I haven't been revealed yet. So, peer around this corner. This corridor is wider, and it has a few lights that are still fully active, so you can see all the way. There are six doors, three on either side, and on the far end you see more abominations, two of them alive, and looking to be in perfectly good health, standing amidst a smear of more blood and grotesqueness, and they're waiting patiently outside of a larger, more heavily reinforced looking door at the very end. With with the light over it being a nice sharp shade of red. I kind of just motion to the others to come over but that. But also like doing that shh symbol on my mouth just to indicate that there's something there, they need to be quiet. Do we need to self check? Uh if you're trying to be quiet then yes. Damn it. I mean, down this far around the corridor? Reminds me, I actually need to go and pull up Mika's character sheet. And who's the one who's always on us about character sheets? Look, I'm the dungeon master, alright? Running NPC characters isn't usually the thing the dungeon master is supposed to do. And then Tom was the thing. Alright, so Mika's stealth <laughs> is plus three. I have little faith Fuck. in this too. Holy Rocket. Rockets. Where Rockets. Where the Rocket did it change? Listen, uh, where the hell did Rocket get all that stealth? <laughs> she invested in that when she picked up Skilled Hero. How does a bird with a metal leg be quiet? Very, By very way, carefully. I actually level up Skilled Hero. Yeah. <laughs> Rocket has taken great effort to practice ever since the funk funk situation. No offense, mate, but you are the one with the heavy armor, right? Alright, so I now need to roll to see if these abominations Shush. can hear you. So 2d6 peep. <laughs> you no. are fine. They do not hear you. Thankfully, they are either stupid or They not. are very focused. They are very focused on the big door at the end of that corridor. Alright, Thanatos, we let's target the one directly ahead first. I'll get a good ambush shot in before you fall off a fire. Fine, baby. And then there's the second one. Mika, if the first one goes down, can you target the second? Sure thing. 
Otherwise, yeah. help us finish the first off. I see. Alistair, it... you keep your mana at the ready, just in case we, we need healing later. Don't waste it. Do not worry. Yeah. I'll do that. Just be uh... careful and don't miss. Rocket, keep an eye out on the, the other side of the corridor on those doors, just in case, you know, something comes through. Okay. So maybe if Rocket goes there, Thanatos and... Oh, well, Rocket and Alistair there? goes this side and... No, they Mika won't see you because they're facing the door. Okay. Okay. So they so go on that side too? Yeah. And then the other three with me, because we're fine during the shots. So you're out of the line of fire. I'll make my uh, ambush attack roll. I need to get you within range first, because right now you are uh, oh, get him, definitely at a long range. All right, so how far do I need to go? It's within how many medium ranges again I need to be? Uh, if you want to be within attack range, you need to be within three medium ranges. So round about so one, two, but, but three, three, I can... Yeah, but it, though it, it is worth noting that a, that attacking from a long range, which that is, will incur a penalty on your accuracy. With all right, so, weapons, so I'm currently four four point five from there, so I need to get one point five close. We're not in combat yet, are we? So need to invest in long range right. weapon. Oh, yeah, okay. that stealth check. Do I get close enough? Your stealth check is holding. So. Up to here, that should be close enough. Yes. Yeah. Shouldn't the rest of us get up close to? Yep. Mm, yep. Nah, because... yep. yep. Alright, I'm firing. 13. That will hit. One of the nice. Alright. Yep. 2d6 plus 39. The first one. Ooh. 49. All right. Ouch. Also, it's worth noting because you got the jump on them, you get a surprise round, meaning you can act twice all everyone before they get a move. So, nice, sweet. It's like extra turns. So, like Neathil, it. as you get within range, you lift up the crossbow and <laughs> you fire off the shot, and it hits the lead of the abomination closest to you, kind of in the same vein as the first one you shot today. Pierces through its back and out its front. There's a big splatter against the front wall. <laughs> Doesn't like you. Thanatos, hit it. I'm gonna fire before I take my next attack. Let's see if you can just kill it, and then we and Mika can focus on the second. Doing it. Thirty-six. All right, let me double. Uh, it's. Oh, it's, it's plus fifty percent. It's plus fifty percent, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so, what's, so what's, what's half of thirty-six? Eighteen. So thirty-six. Maybe took my second. Fifty-four. All right. Alright, so, Thanatos, after you watch Neithal fire off the shot and the abomination starts to turn around, you quickly summon up another fireball and it goes flying across. Some dust on the ground just kind of parts out of the way, and as the abomination's head is kind of coming around, you broadside it in the side of the face with your fireball. There's an explosion, and it goes sliding back a couple feet. Very unhappy. Alright, I'll target that first one again just to try and... Well, Mika has to make a round for the surprise. Well, Mika has to make a move for the surprise round. Yeah, let, let I, me... I haven't done my surprise round because the, the, night... the first thing you do when you manage to get the ambush on an enemy is you get your surprise round. Everyone acts once, and then you get a regular round of combat, and then it moves on to the enemy. All right, me. All right, Mika hit it. So, so Mika gets. I mean, yeah. Um, Mika needs it, doesn't it? Let's see here. I am going to have her use arrow, her kind of a air slash thing. Nice. So the damage on that is power times three plus six, and her power is ten, thanks to some of her equipment. Thirty-seven. All right. So, as that abomination is staggering from the fireball, and its buddy is finally starting to turn around to see what the hell's going on. Mika, you know, draws her hand along her blade and carves it along. A pressurized wave of air goes flying out and carves that abomination clean in half. Just pfft, and it goes splattering against both walls opposite it. Which leaves us with a second. Yeah. All around. I just realized that I was using the wrong power. My power is 11, not 10. Oops. Oh, well, it's dead. 
All right, so 2d6 plus 4 for uh, 12. Now what? 2d6 plus 26. Since I'm doing normal attack this time, 30. 30, all right. Whoosh. You get it in the jaw, and its flesh sort of undulates around it. I feel like we're, like, the artillery brigade. In yeah. Because we, we always tend to be the ones shooting arrows and wind. We're, we're the fire range characters. Ah, shit, no. That should be... God damn it, I still keep doing that. That should be 33, so that's 38. And then half of that is 19, so... 38 plus 19... 57 damage. Yeah. All right, another fireball. Rapid succession. Woof, poof. This one sort of kicks the abomination off its feet, and it sort of slams against the door before dropping back to the ground, smoke rising from its charred body. Mika, be the honest. Yep, Mika is going to expend another 8 MP to use her, her long-range cut thingy again. Good night, fuck ugly. And much, and much like the first one, just carves it in half. Bladders everywhere. Now that's what I call textbook. Or an artillery squad. Or an execution squad. Good luck. Nice shooting, the three of you. Oh boy. Alright, that's that. As you Rocky are... Rocky right, so, well, can you... As you are settling down from that... You start hearing banging on some of the doors. Specifically, this door? Yeah, I can see the text the right door. there. I can see the text on this on this one up here. Yeah, abomination. There's a there's one in there. Does it look it... like they're getting through? Uh well, I need to roll force checks to figure that out. So yeah, here's yeah. the question. Did these things break out or did somebody let them out? Well, considering the doors before were open, just you know, just open, not smashed. Uh -oh. Yes, someone Watch opened the break through. Well, this first one kicks down its door with a with the peeling of shrapnel <laughs> comes storming out, snarling angrily. I need to roll for the other one. Motherfucker. It also breaks out of its room. God damn it. Mika, you, me, get the one behind us. Rocket, I'm going to toss out the Could you do that one? Oh, no, no problem. No. All right. That one? Yeah. Rocket, you want to get Rocket, in there? Rocket, I need backup. All right, so that was so their movement actions. So, I yeah. still got to do their regular actions. Ah, shit. So, this one back here on the left is going to... Uh, going to use Aesthetic Bile on Neothil. Because they finally learned not to attack Nika. I'm getting flashbacks I mean, of XCOM 2 here. They're, they're, they're attacking Nika, so this is going to reverse the problem. Does that hit? Does 13 hit? Yes. Alright, your armor is 8, if I remember correctly. Yes. As is my voice, they're both 8. That's only 14 <laughs> damage you just took, so... <clears throat> that is mildly disgruntling. It just... It, it spits on you, basically. <laughs> it, it, well, like, it, it gets my armor, like, a couple, like two drops get in, and it just mildly irritates my skin. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I mean, it's sore. It's not a mild irritation. It hurts, but it's not, like, serious. I mean, full of adrenaline as I am, it probably just feels mild. And Until later. Right, this and and this one is going to use a more close range attack on Thanatos. Thanatos, what is your avoidance again? <coughs> uh, six. Oh, that's yep. it. Your armor is 12, if I remember correctly. Indeed. One damage to Thanatos. It is but a scratch. Yep, so this here, you... Turn around as that thing comes bursting out of the room and it lunges at you. You lift up the, your arm with the vermilion edge and sort of 
catch it there with like your elbow. You hold it up for a second. His teeth dig in a little bit to your arm, but you quickly like backhand it with the pommel, and it staggers back a couple steps, snarling and writhing, and its whole body rippling angrily. Bad monstrosity. Bad. Now it's back to the party. Mika, help me with this one. Uh, Mika shot at it. Okay. Uh, with just the added bonus of disabling shot to give it minus two accuracy. Oh. Lovely. That disabling shot seems to be very useful. Yeah, but I can only use it once per combat. That hits. Damage. 2d6 plus 26. But yeah, it is useful, which is why I took it. 34 damage. Alright. Whether it's blinding people and lowering their accuracy. It or... lowers their accuracy, lowers their avoidance. Uh, it can also, hold on if I get the list, it can make shots, make them sure they can't escape. Vital shot. Which is how we caught that sniper last time. Yeah. <laughs> Even though well, Tone pretty much said that he was meant to get away. Right. Yes. So, uh, which were you right, using? Thanks. It's avoidance or it's accuracy? Accuracy. Minus two. Alright, so it's accuracy is now one. It's incredibly good, which is why you can only use it once per combat. Well, good fun. Right. It's fuck that one up. Alright, Mika, I would suggest saving the rest of our magic. Right. So she's going to charge forward with her sword. Is going to make a melee attack with it. So she... I say hers is tier three. Yep. For some reason. That'll hit. Ooh. 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 That's. That's max damage right there. Yep, 42. So, she charges it after Neothil shoots it in the head and sort of slides close up and brings her sword up into its underbelly and draws it out in a hard slash. There's a big spray of gray matter against the wall. Which sort of a. Puts her right there, with her shoulder up against the wall as she's getting back to a full stance. Nice. All right, I'm a, I'm a cut this bitch. Just need to double check on my accuracy. It is three. That hits. Yep. Damage. <coughs> Thirty. So, after shoving back the one that was numbing on your arm, you sort of uh, pull back and thrust the vermilion edge into its mouth as it's opening up to lunge at you again. It doesn't dispel it, but it you know it, it clearly doesn't like it. It thrashes for a second and then quickly pulls back with another squirting spray. Right. Rocket, kick it. Okay. Kick it through your poison claws. Uh, no, just regular. I don't think poison will work on these things. More than likely not. Mm. Besides, she loses some of her damage when she does it. That when you kick 11 to hit. Yep, that'll it. definitely hit. Anyway. Damn, 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 don't get them. Um... Oh. oh, I get it. Oh, it's, it took him a while to get shot. <laughs> All right. Twenty-one damage. Oh, All right. So, rocket comes charging up to it as it's uh, reeling from the stab bark. It sort of it hears her leg stumping against the metal. Boom, 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 boom. Turns around just in time for her to lift her mechanical leg and kick it right in the side of the jaw. Cause it to kind of spin in place a little bit because of how like long its body is. So, uh, yep. and Alistair, Alistair, what are you doing? Hey, fuck ugly. Thanks for standing still. All right. What are you doing? Shutting this one by Alistair, what are you doing? Is magic attack I will gather? Mm-hmm. Um, one by Mika. Can you even aim at that one? Uh, I mean, how about how about you let them take care of it? Uh, I think he, he's in range. He is in. He is yeah. within a long range, so yeah, he can use Dia on it. 
I mean, right, probably, yeah, it, it, won't, it won't be the worst yeah. idea since Mikkel's the last one to attack. He'll probably try and go after her, and she's squishy. That's true. Mm -hmm. Also, I believe these That's things why. take extra damage from holy right, attacks. Right, right, so your power yeah. is five. Yeah. Okay. So... Just, just checking. That just seemed a little low. Is all. All right. Well, he's Sorry. a power. I need to. I need to buff it up. Yep. Next time you level. All right, so, mm -hmm. Alasar, you, you sort of come around the corner, you see the fight going on, you conjure up a few balls of light on the end of your staff and throw them down, almost like using one of those dog ball throwers at the park. The balls go flying down, kind of shooting by everyone else with this high-pitched noise. They quickly gather up around that abomination and converge on its location. There's a pulse of light, and it staggers back as more bits of gray matter go flying everywhere. <laughs> All right. So these things take extra from Holy, don't they? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. I forgot to account for that. They do. What's half a 17? 8 point. This is 8. To add an extra 8 under the team. There. There we go. Okay. All right. It's still not dead, though. It's still not dead, but it's pretty But it's pretty hurt. And uh, it is very displeased. And given that it is under half HP, it is going to use Gnashing Fang, its most powerful attack, uh -oh. on Mika. Because she is right there. Uh, it definitely hits because her avoidance is six. Shit. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Eight for. Not as much as it's gonna hurt when knee fires back afterwards. That's twenty damage to Mika. Oh. That's. Honestly, that's honestly a lot less than you were making it out to be. It comes, however, with the added drawback the that Mika's avoidance now suffers a negative two penalty until the end. It's of its the version of disabling shot. Pretty much, yeah. So her avoidance is now four <laughs> until the end of this combat encounter. There you go. Let's hear this one up here is not under half HP. So it's just going to use Hard Bite on Rocket because you just kicked it and it doesn't like that. So, Rocket, your avoidance. Also, also remember... To... Oh, wait, no, that one. Never mind. It does not hit. And Rocket is back! So, it snarls angrily and lunges at you, Rocket, to, like, try and clamp down in your neck. But you just kind of lean back as it's coming in, and then you peck it between the eyes and it staggers back a step. Whoop! <laughs> Party, back to you. I love how Rocket's back to not being able to I hate it. it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Alistair, are you doing a melee attack? Alistair, what, what the hell are you doing? I'm in this one now. Are you trying to help to get Mika. Up to it. Okay. And... Well, of course I can. I also hit it for 36 damage. And I got 12, so it hits. I just need a wall for damage. Can we do this one at a time so I can keep up with what's going on? <laughs> yes, Alistair, hold your horses. Yeah, knee, knee tends to go first. Anyway, so right. that's 36 I... damage to that one knee, the one that it just chomped on Mika. Yes. You lift your crossbow and you shoot it, and it, it immediately just it shudders as soon as the crossbow bolt pierces into its flesh. It shudders for a second and dissolves. Nice. And here comes my hit on this fucker here. All right, so let's see here. So Alistair rolled uh, 12 to hit. 12. So, yep, that hits. Roll damage. Mm -hmm. Then what else do I have to have the wall? Uh, you need to roll your damage. Okay. Which, which, I got... which, he, which if I'm remembering... He hasn't, done, he hasn't done that in forever. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm double-checking. Yeah, because, because you're using an arcane weapon, that would be your mind stat. And because it's a tier 2 weapon, it would be mind times 2 plus 2d6. Okay. So... Ooh, it's going to get a lot of hit. Bugger. Forgot the R. Do this again. Bugger. 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 I fucked up. Boogers. Oh, yeah. again. Eh. Alistair is trying to roll. 33. Oh, okay. Got really quiet. 
Uh, your, mind, your mind is 13. <laughs> right? we were, okay, nice. We were mm -hmm. waiting for Alistair to roll. Yep, that's yeah. where all my points have went, I guess. All right, so, Alistair, you charge up on the abomination that's currently pincered between Thanatos and Rocket. You lift up your staff, and you just <laughs> clunk it on the side of the head as it's as it's recoiling after getting pecked by Rocket. Hmm. Back off, you ugly bastard. Yay, my turn. Mm -hmm. Finish it, Thanatos. It's coming your way. Slice and dice. Yep, be it. That's a, a hit. 11 hits. Roll damage. <laughs> Teamwork. I smack it towards you. You slice and dice it. 28 damage. Uh, All, right. All right. You're bullying this thing now. Mm -hmm. so, to me, well, to it's you. Five on, it was 5 <laughs> on 2. So, oh, so I just thought of a new game. Let's play Abomination in the middle. <laughs> So it staggers back after Alistair clunks it, and you take advantage of it, Thanatos, and plunge the Vermilion Edge into its into, into its back right above its legs, and then rip it back out at an angle. Another spray of gray matter. Its form is starting to destabilize. It's not quite dead yet, but it's close. Rocket, Rocket, Rocket. Rocket. Yeah. Fuck it up. Okay. <laughs> Fuck it up. Across the room. Make it regret ever being created in this world. Our chocobo is better than you weird abomination chocobo things. Ten, that mm -hmm. is all yeah. damage. The eight hundred always speaks to one thousand. I'll just see her just <laughs> jump up and smash its head into the ground. This bastard insult chocobos. Kill Rocket, would you like to? Would you like to use Thanatos' suggestion? Okay. <laughs> okay, so, Rocket. As you watch this thing starting to destabilize, you get a bright idea. You take a step back and then lunge forward, bringing up your organic leg. You latch onto its face, and with the momentum you had, and you know, being a chocobo, you sail past your friends, carrying this thing along by the face, and then when you come to a stop in front of Neothil, you bring it back down onto the ground. There's this echoing foong and pfft, and it scatters under your talon, painting the floor for like 30 feet in every direction with just gray. Ooh. Badass. And that wasn't even the metal leg. Kind of shows how terrifying you are. <laughs> and adorifying. Well done, everyone. Alright. All right. So that's the end of that combat. Yep. Patch up any injuries you have, but not using anything valuable. We're going to need it for later. We need to I look think we're doors. doing okay for the moment. It's mostly, mm -hmm. if you need more ethers, take them. Mm -hmm. Paul here, what's in this room? Well, you uh, push the button on the side using your uh, level using your level three key card, and uh, it opens up. And what you see is a large chamber, uniform in size. There is a central terminal, like in the middle of the room. There is a raised platform with a computer terminal on it, and around the edges, there are five cylindrical tubes, many of which are broken, mm. but two of which are not, and each one is filled with glowing blue bubbling liquid. And the two that are not shattered have will appear to be in progress abominations what? forming inside. Oh, that's fun. I found where they make them. Hey, Thanatos. Can you check that room? Oh, shh. He's dead. So you're in Rocket, when you open up yours, you look in. It's much the same as Nee's room, central terminal with a bunch of analytical readouts from the pods. And most of the pods in this one are shattered. The one closest to you on the right is also shattered, but the abomination that's slumped in front of it appears to have been par only partially formed when it came out of the tube, so it's dissolving on the floor as you speak. Yeah. Also, I think Luminar got called away to do laundry. Vanitas, take point. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna peek in this one. <laughs> All right. You look in, much the same. Alistair? Much the same. I'm seeing a theme. Alright, uh, before we head on, Alistair, can you quickly just have a quick look down, we'll see, down the rest of that corridor? Over uh, here. Yeah. Alistair? Sorry, I got caught away. Hey. Can you check what's down the rest of this corridor? Just what have happened? a look down there. Have a look down this corridor. Okay. Since you're closest, to the, except for Lumina, but Lumina is... Oh, more blue fluids. That's, that's grim. So, 
You look down this corridor, you see the holding cell stretching on for a while. You see some more blood stains on the ground up ahead. And a door on one side, which the blood stains lead under. Hmm. It looks like a total shit show here. Oh, we'll check that later. Let's focus on the doors at the end of this corridor first. That we haven't checked. Because mm. why would they want to go in this room? Could there be survivors, you think? Yeah, Possibly. well. Possibly. Depends on the survivors. Let's check these rooms here, Nee. Uh, Thanatos checks the rest. Can the rest of you come a bit closer, just in case? Mm-hmm. Maybe not all the way to the door, Lazar. Because uh, you're not... I was thinking of knocking, maybe. No, no, don't no, fucking knock on it. <laughs> this is it's not... literally it's literally a pool of blood coming out from underneath it. You want the knock? <laughs> <laughs> well, in his defense, we did knock when we got here, and yeah, worked. but it wasn't a fucking horror door. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, it just, just opened to our mech and a bunch of turrets. Misery. Before we go in this yeah, one, let's nice. get into our formation so we're ready to kick whatever horrible thing is behind it. In the gonads. So, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take right. Thanatos take left. Rocket take center. Mika and uh, Alasir, you take the back. Right. Well, Mika stays behind. All right, you and Mika, since you are support people, put you in the back. Yeah, but I could take a hit. Well, Rocket can take more of a hit. And so feel more Rocket, of a hit. I'm gonna say Rocket's harder to hit. Come on, Rocket, in front of me. Was he? Town's gonna have to move. Yeah, we gotta wait for Lumina to come back. Well, Uh, moving up, or she's staying there. Okay. Back. Hello, Lumina. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. To recap, what you missed, um, we moved towards the door. Towards the door at the end, yeah. All right. So, Lumina, the door that you are now standing in front of after checking all of these big rooms that you now have come to determine are brewing chambers where the abominations are created, you are now standing in front of a much larger, more heavily reinforced, almost blast door type construction at the end of the hallway where you just had your fight. Blood is beneath your talons. And uh, yeah, you're all in formation, about ready to open it up. Alright, uh, shall we all roll stealth checks again, just to see if we can... I mean, we're gonna be stealth. able it, it uh, is like a... How big is this door, roughly? Uh, significantly large. Again, it's like a blast yeah. door, it's like... Oh, never mind then, it'll be open, it'll be easy to support if it opens. Never mind. Yeah. Alright, okay. let's open it up. Let's see what's behind the big ass door, shall we? Alright, so... You, uh, push the button... And uh, the following noise greets you. <laughs> the door does not budge. Not budge. I guess this level three key card is not required. But then well, you hear a distorted, staticky voice coming from the panel you just pushed the button on. You see a little speaker on it. Knew it. Is that a rescue team? Rocket. I think you the only form of rescue so, you may uh, get. Also, I need to point out. Rocket immediately recognizes this voice. Oh. It's the voice of Argeth, the director. The director. Yep. Ooh. Hmm. Argeth, the director. Who has the highest uh, bullshitting skill? <laughs> the That's highest amazing. bullshitting skill. I you mean negotiate, good sir? Uh, either negotiate. Uh, three. I guess it's up to me if I'm just doing one before. All right. Well, yeah, you're the nicer one of us, so talk to the asshole and get him to open it. Mm-hmm. The only rescue team you're ever going to get. Really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's your... De- you know, when we said bullshit, we meant lie to him and say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair. Okay, so... <laughs> I, I remind from a scene of Ghostbusters where if something asks you if you are a god, you say yes. Never. I'm defiant to the end. <laughs> so there's um, a pause. Uh, I hate you, Alistair. I hate you so much. <laughs> and the voice on the other yeah. end says, well, that's not ominous at all. 
In the background, me, me just face palms. <laughs> a moment passes, and then a little uh, blue light that you hadn't noticed above the door, under the red light, suddenly turns, and you realize it's a security camera. And it looks down towards you all. Lumina, are you still there? Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Okay. So, so he sure. probably had a way to see us before he opened the door. Yep. There's a moment of silence before Argith continues. Ah. Uh, I might have known. Hello, Rocket. Been a Hello, long time. Argus. You seem to be Didn't wearing our additions rather well. Are you enjoying them? They work. Good. For the most part. Your father designed them to. Such a shame he had to take leave of his senses. Such a shame you had to take leave of him. <laughs> so what's your big objective here then, Rocket? To keep anybody else from suffering the same fate. Well, you're a little late for that. Look around you. Do you see the carnage on this level? Yeah, whose fault is that? Maybe you shouldn't have allied with a servant of Diabolus. I recognize that now. A little late for that, huh? You should so... ask your little cat boy about who let him out. So what exactly happened here, Director? When word got back to us that there was intruders in the upper levels, I tried to ask Murasan to help. He said gladly. And then his, and then our creation suddenly went berserk, started tearing out of their containment cells, slaughtering my people, my soldiers. I barely had time to get here and defend myself. Didn't a certain lady tell you that that was a bad idea? Nabot? Mm-hmm. I suppose I judged her too harshly. It doesn't matter, though. Answer me this. Are you here to destroy this facility? We're not going to let another Amber Plague occur. And this place is a breeding pit now. Which was Murasan's intention all along, by the way. I see that. This place... It's hurt Forever. a lot of people. And we sent a lot of people from the upper levels to escape. We've given them that option. I well, think you're the only other person alive in this facility currently. So I the question is... Gone. So the question is, do we give him that option, Rocket? It's ultimately up to you. This is your mission, I suppose, but I will say that there is a lot of people back in the city that want him to answer for his crimes. It's not just you who suffered because of him. Mm, indeed. Whatever choice you make is yours. But remember, revenge ain't gonna bring him back, unfortunately. True, it's not. It doesn't stop the feelings that I have about him. Hmm. Nor should it, but... but... I have nothing to say to a pathetic man who hides behind doors. Hmm. Atta girl. As you stand behind your conviction, so too shall I. Well, here we stand, Director. If you want to get out of here alive, you can help us destroy the facility, stop the amber from spreading and potentially destroying the land above, at which point you will be take coming with us, but at least you'll be alive. I cannot destroy this facility. My life's work is here. And I intend to defend it with my life. Your life's work has become a breeding pit of amber and to serve Diabolos' plan. He mm. is kind of a big fan. By the way, mm. unfortunately, your work has been compromised. You have no choice. I possess have any idea what you were unleashing. I possess the means to quell it. That's what you're worried about. And you haven't done it yet because because I've been locked in this room, you idiot. <sighs> yeah, I'm the idiot when you trusted. Look at around you. 
Mind that in a minute. What's this method of yours? In a moment, this door will open, and you'll see it for yourself. And then the camera blinks out, and the communication falls silent. Well, that wasn't ominous at all. Be prepared. Uh, Rocket, this guy seems like a real dickhead. He is. He's not so powered. Obviously. Well, if he tries anything, this is, I guess he meets his fate. If he, if he tries anything, well, Rocket can decide that. But, and also, and unless he says otherwise, let's take him into custody. Even, right. if he, even if he doesn't want his life's work destroyed, it's sort of inevitable now. All right, so, doesn't. after a couple moments, the red light over the door suddenly and turns green. <sighs> Can we open All the right. door now? Yep, you push the button again, and the door begins to slide open. <laughs> Slowly, a very large chamber opens up. It appears, from a glance, to be a very large testing ground and armory. But most of what's inside appears to have been reduced to shrapnel and flames, and you see the dissolved, bloodied corpses of a very large number of abominations scattered all around. And then, and... towards the very back, you see a large collection of girders and metal struts that surround and appear to make up a docking point for a colossal suit of Magitek armor. And are you going to let us see it? Or... Yeah, we can. Yep. Whoa. Oh okay. my. Yep. So, that and, that, and that suit is active, oh by the way. And... Can it fit through the door? Is it hostile? It takes a step forward and Argus's voice comes from it, projected through a speaker. This is my method. If you will protect wow. your convictions, then I will protect mine. So this is how it's going to be, huh, Argus? You're going to try and I'm kill going us. To go, I'm going to go down what? with my ship, if you will allow the analogy. What Can I, I say that for a director of a science? And make his introduction. What was that? What? Why do I predict that Marisan is going to make the killing blow laugh and make his introduction? I don't know. Speaking of, before you try and kill us in such a glorious manner and we defy your plans, where is Murasan? I do not know. But when I find him, he's going to pay for what he's done. Then well, why not take my I advice? That is not wise taking you out on his own. We have faced an agent. Because that's how bad guys in Final Fantasy work. So, we have faced why... an agent of One at a time! God. Okay, Jesus. One at a time. Why not... Okay, okay. <laughs> Why not use that fancy suit to help us kill him, and then we can duke it out, huh? Roll me a negotiation check, but suffer a negative four penalty. Oh, I thought I was doing the negotiation, but okay. Okay, so... I mean, what's your number? 2d6. It's going to be a minus one, since he took all of my shit. Damn it. Seven. Seven. Not enough. Probably not. <laughs> I would say something, but okay. There's a moment of silence before Argeth continues. I don't think so. Tempting as the offer is, I can't knowingly align myself with you, knowing all the damage you caused upstairs. And consider then you're an idiot. We sent people running to escape. Every scientist we have run into, we have let them escape. They are with a friend of ours outside this forest, and will be taking taking it alive and unharmed. Do you truly give you that? Please allow me. We give you the same option. The difference between them and me is I have nothing to gain from going with that. Everything I've ever built is here. If I go and with you, really... you, I lose all of it. If I stay, like I can at least die really trying to defend it. It like or you, you could help us fix your greatest mistake in helping a dark god try and destroy the world. May I speak? No wife, no kids. Yes, Alistair. 
So. Look, I know you want to protect your work. And yeah, you made mistakes, but I believe there is a chance of a second chance and also fixing on the, upon those mistakes. But the biggest mistake you could ever make is trying to take out this guy on your own. Trust me, the five of us, well, four of us have faced off against one of the, his agents of this evil dark Technically, god. Technically, Mika was there away. too, so it is all five of us. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, then. Well, the first time. But yeah, the first time it did not go so well. We almost died. And it doesn't go well. Trust me. You would need our help to defeat him. If you just kill us, or even not, you would lose to him if you try to face him on your own. Trust me. Crystals can penetrate suits of armor like that. He's dangerous. I'm afraid to compare with that suit and him, it would be just like a huge, massive freaking hammer just crushing a tin can. No offense. Moreover, he's been working your technology for how long now? He knows you, Bill, and he knows us. Heck, you might even try to corrupt it. So please, let's just unite against a common enemy and defeat him together. Of all your choices that you've had in your life, this is your most important. Think it through. Negotiation check. Me. Because you capped off the sentence. Oh. <laughs> and then, Alison, do you want one more thing for you to say? It's just... Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and we can can we kind of pool our negotiations, considering we've all been yelling at him. I'll let you have whoever has the highest role in general. So yeah, Alistair, his so bonus. Alistair, that's twelve. All right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. Ah. Uh, oh, that was uh, rocket. Never mind. Oh, it was rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, all right. So twelve. Hmm. Well, the Goliath stands still for a second, but before Argus gets a chance to answer, there's a dark chuckle in the air. Oh, hi. Oh, there's Marisan. I would assume. Oh, Hello. I was wondering where he'd come up. All right. So. Then, in the air, right here, overhead, like floating, there's a burst of dark energy. (laughs) And when it dissipates, you see a dark-robed individual. His robes are dark blue. Do I have his picture in here somewhere? I do not. I'll need to fix that Oh, no, it's odd time to go up against a dark blue mage. Wonderful. You're slipping, Tom. Shut up. (laughs) Look, I wasn't expecting you to go this route, right? I was expecting you to just launch into combat. (laughs) But the saddest thing of all, we don't have a dragon helping us. Oh, wow, Chuck. Give me a chance to maybe do a disabling shot on him to prevent his escape. <laughs> that would be lovely. Let's just hope that Director Dipshit over there actually listens to us. Yeah, well, maybe now since he's an empty, he's about to take over the Goliath. Hmm. You know, the whole, the whole point of t- overtaking his technology. Maybe he actually will help. Right, so, he looks like this. <laughs> I love how we can't see his face. I know he's human. Uh, Hmm. Not exactly. That doesn't look human to me. Look at those hands. Oh, hey, Blue Wraith. That's just me being too bad at art. (laughs) I mean, okay. (coughs) I mean, we can't see anything other than his hands, so... Yeah, and those are gloved. Cool. It's Blue Death. Mirasan, I presume? The one and only. Hey, Saran 2.0. How's life? Saran. Yes, I know that name. A piteous fool who overestimated his own power. By the way, I got your greeting card. You should have stuck with Hallmark. Murasan doesn't comprehend what you are saying. <laughs> well, whatever. What is it? Sorry. So, whatever Rocket's views are on that weirdness, at least we agree on one thing about Saran. 
Now, I assume you're about to take over that giant Magistech mech and prove us right? Or stab through it with crystal. Neither, actually. Although neither of you are particularly far off. You hear Argus let out a irritated growl, and the Goliath lurches forward as if to attack. Murasan doesn't even look. He just lifts up one hand towards the charging Goliath. There's a pulse of orange light. There's a brief flicker inside, and then you hear Argeth suddenly screaming inside the Goliath, and it starts thrashing. Murasan ah, slowly lowers his hand. I just thought it was a robot. <laughs> Let's see. Well, well, I mean, it is a robot, but he's like thrashing with the controls. There we go. He is thrashing. Ah, there we go. Is Argus thrashing. is in the mech suit. Yeah, kind of like yeah, the Hyper was. Yeah. yeah, these things are vehicles. So he's piloting it. Well, where else would he be? I thought he was remote controlling it from somewhere. But... Nope, he is like, nah. because no, I he's, he's, door down he's there. in there. No, he's inside. Yep. With just a second, I'm getting a token for Saran or Murasan. Excuse me. <laughs> uh... It, it, can we just call him Saron 2.0? I mean, that's up to you if you want to call him that out of character, but it's incorrect. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of his role. He's the, he's the upgraded new Saron. Overconfident, angry, with, with a nice uh, staff. I see. Yeah, he's a catboy. Hey, I mean, oh, I mean, Thanatos, you nick Saron's sword. How we can get this stuff to Alistair? And... Well, see, Alistair, you can nick this guy. Right, I need to shrink this guy back down to regular size. Hmm. That's a good point. Yeah, we'll see. That's so, what say. is he doing to Argon? You say. That's do not a nice know staff. for sure what he is doing. <laughs> he looks back down at you as a. Uh, it's thrashing, and a big grin starts to appear. Or, well, you can't see his face, but you get the impression of a big grin. Ah, so you're not necessarily taking over the mech suit. Are you taking over Argus? I am taking no control. I'm simply releasing his restraints. Infecting with Amber, in other words. That's one way to look at it. <sighs> We've seen plenty of that to know where this is going. Mm -hmm. Then I'm sure you'll have plenty of fun with what comes next. And you see more shadows gathering around him, and you know he's about to can, try teleport away. Can I quickly do a disabling shot to prevent his yeah, failure? You can, can, just stop you, this you can absolutely try. Either way, your boss is ugly. <laughs> Tend to hit. Please, me. Let's see here. That does not hit. Okay, oh, fucking yes. what? What did I need? I guess we get, get you, much, much, you needed much higher. I will tell you that. I needed a crit. So, so you fire oh, off. Right. So, so you fire off the shot, and Murasan turns at the crossbow bolt and just catches it casually out of the air. Looks at it. For okay, a now that's just showing off. Ram the fucker. Do something. So he casts the bolt aside, and then there's more shadows, and zzz, and Murasan poofs and disappears. <laughs> Coward. You so hear, you hear his voice in the air. I'll be waiting below. All right. So, director, I assume you're mad now. You just hear more shouting from the Goliath. Uh, well, you ready to finish this bastard rocket? Because I don't think we're taking this guy in anymore. Ah, uh, looks like we're gonna be forced into combat. Indeed. You all right? Yeah. All right. All right, so, and I just posted the battle theme for this particular fight in chat. Lovely. So, I guess we're doing, I guess we're doing this now. Yep. Heads up, Let's... this fight's going to take a while. All right. Well, it's a giant Goliath-class mech suit. All right, before we start it, let's talk I a bit of OC music. strategy, shall we? Um... All right, so there's this very large room, but do we want to find the large room, or do we want to corral it down this long corridor? I, I say a... make it difficult and make it come down the corridor. I have a strange feeling that this thing can just bust through the walls with how big I it know, is. But yeah, but let's corridor, just slow it down. He's a colleague, man. There's red stuff on the floor. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. God damn it. All right. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't 
I mean, I guess we can take cover in some of these rooms if we need to. So yeah, let's see yeah, if we can lure him out here. Uh, with blue we'll fluid around us. Well, Great. all the abominations around here are dead. Let's do a yeah, medium no, movement I mean, back. This is move back, back and make it more difficult for this damn thing. Machines. That's where they come from, so... Well, I mean, they're all smashed and empty from what Tom said. Let's, yeah. let's follow this up by testing the waters. Thanatos, throw a lightning bolt. See whether it's got that anti-lightning thing on it or whether it actually takes double damage. Oh, joy. Fine. Just, all right. Test, just test the waters a bit. All right. I'm, I'm going to shoot a lightning bolt at it. Also, Rocket, you have that bomb. I suggest you use it. Don't we'll get the chance. Bomb. All right, okay. so... Get close That's a good point. 41 lightning attack to the Goliath, motherfucker. And I thought tries to weaken it, and then Rocket throws in the bomb. Stat. And that's... 5 MP. Please be vulnerable to lightning. Please. All right, so... Taking his magic armor into consideration, that is 74 damage you just dealt to him. Yes, he's more than with the lightning. So you All right. guys been weakened. All right, before we, the next turn, um, I'm going to since he's vulnerable to lightning, I'm going to duck into this room and wait for him to come along. Then I'll go for dagger because that will do more damage than my bow. All right. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. The rest, the rest of you, take up any position you find us, you find mm -hmm. necessary, and take this thing down. Get it. Well, well, I cover your knee, just in case the fucker decides to smash through the wall after you. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. So, You're welcome, Mika. Mika, you stay with Thanatos. Yep. She's going to shift herself around a bit and is going to um. Let's see here. Oh, that's the thing I should have asked. Shit. She's going Bomb. To, yeah. She's, exco Wait. she's going to expend the last of her MP to cast a Blizzara. Yes. Good. Which brings it down to zero MP. And we got ethers. Yep, but it's power times five plus two d six ice damage. So I'm that actually shaking, good. shaking because I'm so excited to finally be here. Yay! Mm. All right, throw the chapter ending bomb. boss. Let's do this. Uh, Let's no, show we... it how we deal with bastards like this. The only uh, thing no, I want to know... we've got Mirasan to deal with after this. Yeah, but I also okay. got a question about the bomb. Does it work as a slow action or does, is it it's a standard action to throw it? Okay. Lovely. All right, so Mika sort of steps forward, you know, lifts up the her sword, puts her hand on it, and a, a few coils of gla of ice come bursting up out of the ground under the walker, piercing it in a few places before shattering. It <sighs> kind of shudders a little bit, but it seems fine otherwise. Do you ever okay, know so the red blood stains look like eyelashes? I right, rocket. Do you? Can you throw? Are you able to throw that bomb? Because it won't Not make much difference. Away, no. Like how far are you? Hold on. Uh, you have to be within attacking distance. Medium it's range. One. Medium range. Two. Oh, already, she... And she already used her movement action to get away from the door. So. All right. So you need to be in medium range. Okay, rocket. You. Uh, I s Rocket, next turn, you get into this place and also take cover until it moves past to get into melee range. Anatos, Mika, you continue moving down that corridor. I want you to have range to keep doing your thing. Alright. Alright, so, is it to the enemy then? And yeah. I hope my ground. Alright, yes. so... See if our plan survives encounters with the enemy. <laughs> Alright, so... As an instant action, the Goliath class Magitek armor is going to summon a blue barrier around itself. Shield. Right. And then it's going to charge. And you are all rather alarmed by how fast it is because it covers the distance in like two steps and then breaks through the wall, just peeling it aside with a deafening crash. <laughs> And it, called it. And it is right on top delay, of you. Man. Mika oh, looks up, her ears it. folding back. Oh no. Oh shit. How is something that big that fast? Long legs. 